welcome you. Roman, thank you for coming to London to see you all. You've directed this play yourself, so is it a strange experience, one, to see it in English, and two, to see someone else's production? Um, yeah, it, it is sort of surprising to see it in English, because English is always faster. And, uh, <laughs> and I think this tradition of storytelling is something British in a way, so uh, it has, this production has, when you compare it to the German production, a different pace. Yeah. It's faster, but it works very well. So, and uh, for the second part, it's, of course, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's great to see other people do the work. <laughs> and I know it's not easy. Uh, so, it's, it's great to sit there just relax. Quite a difficult play to write, to direct, to act. So, what happened on day one of rehearsals when you had to face the challenge of directing this play? Well, um, Sort of when I planned or when I got the job to direct it myself, I was so secure, so confident that I could easily do this. I knew it all. I, I, I was so clever. And then uh, there was day one, and they were reading the play in the rehearsal room, and I really started to sweat. And, oh God, how can I do this? And, uh, and uh, in fact, you can't do it alone. You need it. Song, you need actors to help you. You can't make it up in your mind. You need, you need the, the, the help and the inspiration of, of everybody in the room. Mm -hmm. One question I often have for writers, I speculate when I read a play, what was the starting point? What was, in fact, since you're here, we can look up the answers at the back, what was the starting point of this play? Well, there were two very different starting points. Uh, first, there was a visit from a dramaturg and a director from Sweden, from Riks Theater, and they came to Berlin and asked me to write a play for them, in the tradition of other works of mine, like Arabian Night, for example, um, in order to to get a play that is sort of uh, far away from, let's call it, Scandinavian naturalism. So they wanted something very anti-psychological, something very playful in a way. Um, so that was all they told me. And I was sort of accepting and uh, didn't know what to do with it. And then some months later, uh, there, there came a man up to me, a lawyer, who was uh, defending illegal immigrants in Germany who got already caught and wait in prison to get expelled from the country. So they, they get legal advice. Uh, and he came up to me just uh, waiting at a traffic light really and told me, hey, why don't you write a play about this? And then I started to do some research with his help and uh, got to talk with people who take care of their prisoners, uh, uh, priests and people who sort of do the social work. And they opened up a world to me that I hadn't known. Sort of, of course, I knew some illegal workers in Germany, but uh, this special world was immigrants from uh, Ukraine, Russia, uh, China, and other countries. They all piled up in these prisons, and they have this uh, sort of Babylonian mix of languages, having people from very different cultures in the same cell. Mm -hmm. So um, that really made me think, and uh, <coughs> and I really wanted to do that, and I didn't have no clue how to manage, especially this language thing. And then uh, I decided to sort of focus in a little bit emblematic way on the Asian immigrants. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was sort of the real first step into the play. Mm -hmm. Because then next was the thought, how can we do this? How can we, we meaning Westerners, white Westerners, enact, how can we impersonate uh, uh, Illegal workers from abroad. Mm -hmm. What was your solution? Well, of course, there is no real solution because we, we, we cannot pretend to be Chinese. We don't have sort of a Chinese based actors in Germany, we hardly have that. Mm -hmm. uh, we hardly find them. Uh, so it was rather clear that it needs a very open theatrical form mm -hmm. where actors on stage just tell who they are. I am a Chinese person. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
following this approach, the rest followed. That if you sort of cross uh, terms of race, you also have to cross maybe uh, sexes and ages. Mm -hmm. And so everything became twisted in the end. It wasn't the first. It wasn't the first idea. So it was a committed choice to have actors playing different characters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sort of this this uh, this. This task of having 15 characters and five actors is sort of part of, part of the, the problem and part of the fun as well. And also, how many scenes? There's like 40 scenes or more? I think it's more, I don't know, really. 48. Quite 48 scenes? Quite a lot. I mean, short, short scenes, which makes it much easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's very short, episodic. Characters are actors, are playing different characters. Even within a scene, or is it always a, does one actor stay in character for a whole scene? Uh, well, inside the scenes, it's basically they stick to the. Sometimes it even jumps inside the scenes, but but very briefly. In general, one could say once you are in, let's say, the the little kiosk next to the restaurant, it's mm -hmm. rather clear who's who. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would, be, would be become too uh, confusing. I'd say. And a further question is the mixture of storytelling and presentation and scene. Is that something you've used before as a technique in your writing or unique to this? I, I have done it uh, in the Arabian <coughs> Night. Um, basically in the Arabian Night. I did it a little bit in another place, but not in, 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 in this extent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and for other reasons. In the Arabian Night, which is also dealing with strange things and surreal voyages somewhere in the desert, uh, right up of the apartment in some skyscraper. But it is a, it, that needed some sort of narrative style as well in order to just to be able to create the image in the head of the spectator. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't do it before in, as, as consequently as I did here. Mm -hmm. And what other uh, innovations did you make in this play? Did you you had this content that you were writing. Yes, you've got a different starting point, you've done some research. But you also have a context, which is the infrastructure of what would have been Swedish, but then turned out to be Austrian mm -hmm. or German theatre ensembles. What, are, who you, what actors would you be writing for? Why is it inconceivable to write for a Chinese actor? It's simply because there aren't many in, in, in the German speaking area. We, uh, the, the, sort of the, the, the wave of immigration from Asia in Germany is not as old as it is here. So mm -hmm. the, the, the second or third generation isn't, isn't that sort of far. Mm -hmm. Right now you would find, especially white Vietnamese people who immigrated to the old uh, East Germany, mm -hmm. and they came maybe in the 70s or 80s. Now you find their children going to schools and universities. Now, now sort of this is starting to grow, but uh, the, there's no, there's no market. But uh, on the other hand, even if there would be, I think it's more interesting in this case to show sort of the whole story from the angle of uh, of let's let's call them the white people who've always been there. So mm -hmm. It's a little bit about them and them and us. The West and the others. So uh, I think it makes absolute sense to take, as in the other parts of the play, sort of the let's call it the biological opposite, mm -hmm. in order to create even more identification. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this issue, for example, about uh, uh, sex, slavery, and prostitution, everybody knows about that. Everybody knows that this exists. Everybody knows that Asian women are sort of misused. Uh, so uh, I wanted to tell the story and avoid at the same time that people say, okay, this is an old hat. We know this. We know this all. We've seen it all. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a way to seduct the audience. It's also a trap. You go for it, you believe, you, you, you follow the story at the end and the cricket, and then you find out that there's something intended. Mm. What uh, challenges did you find in the play with working with actors? It's a difficult play for actors, probably a difficult play to direct, but did you find, did 
you get frustrated with your own play? <laughs> I, I did get desperate. Uh, <laughs> but we, we were uh, still, we were, we were really having a great time. We were laughing hysterically during the work because we didn't know what to do with it. Um, and especially, I think the worst part for the actors is what is in between. Once you jump from one character to the other, it's clear, okay, I can pretend to be a cricket. But what do I do when I'm not on stage? I mean, I, they all have to be on stage, but they have to watch their colleagues work. But they, they can't stay in their character. It's something very strange for him. Mm -hmm. So he's sort of hanging around in private, but he's doing a job. So it's, that's uh, something... Uh, they, the, 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 the Viennese actors had some trouble with, and we had to develop, uh, as Ram did here, some, develop some sort of um, form of concentration to sort of keep the level mm -hmm. of energy and not sort of step out of the, out of, out of the play. Mm -hmm. We we uh, we called it the grey zone. The grey zone. The grey zone. <laughs> something is not is not what am I right now? I don't know, but it's sort of. Hold on. Mm -hmm. We might bring in to begin with the audience, but to some of the actors, 